morning. I'm Carrie Moss Stern. Welcome to this news briefing from the 251st National Meeting and Exposition of the American Chemical Society in San Diego. We are joined today by Drs. Li Chun Lu and Ji Feng Liu from the Mayo Clinic College of Medicine. They will be talking to us about a new spongy material designed to fix damaged spines. Dr. Liu? Thank you. Um, bone metastasis occurs in many cancer patients, most frequently to the spine. Metastatic spines that require the re removal of the vertebral body create a non-contained skeletal defect that would require the reconstruction of the anterior column. So the surgical exposure can be anterior, posterior, or both. The anterior approach uh, poses a greater risk for vessel damage and internal organ injury. So the posterior approach would be desired for those often frail cancer patients. Their expandable metal cages have been developed and currently in clinical use for this purpose. However, they are very expensive and are much more rigid than the native bone. So in this study, we have developed a new strategy for vertebral body replacement using a novel, inexpensive, expandable, polymer-based vertebral body uh, replacement system. So as illustrated here, after removal of the diseased tissue and putting in the posterior instrumentation, we're gonna insert a small dehydrated um, hydrogel-based cage into the defect. In vivo swelling of the material will make it um, expand to a predetermined size and fit tightly between the uh, vertebral bodies. Um, then we're gonna, can you go back to the previous slide, please? Sure. And then the next step, we're gonna inject a second polymer into the lumen of the hollow cage, which will accomplish the anterior column reconstruction and provide mechanical stability. Next slide, please. So here are the examples of the oligo polyethylene glycol fumarate hydrogel cages at the dehydrated and expanded stages. We're able to manufacture a variety of sizes for specific patients. And then the supportive core material is made of polypropylene fumarate, PPF. And we have developed this material as a synthetic bone substitute. In addition to metastatic spines, this composite graft may be useful in other clinical situations where the vertebral body is de destructed or collapsed due to extensive trauma or infection. Thank you. Do we have any questions in the audience? It looks like we have a it looks like we have an online question. Christine Saw, Office of Public Affairs. Um, so I just have a question about any additional materials that you might need to hold the um, the the cage in place. Do you or what what will hold it in place? Basically, is it just the pressure from the the vertebra that are adjacent to it, or do you need something additional? Um, so for the hollow cage, it's mostly just after the expansion. Um, the tension will hold it in place. But then after the injection of the core material, because it's in situ cross-linkable, it will make it fit really tight between the adjacent vertebral bodies. And we have a question from the audience. Thanks, so it's Kath O'Driscoll from Chemistry and Industry Magazine. Um, so you mentioned that the polymer material is basically a hydrogel, so I understand is, is it some sort of water that you add? Is it a hydration reaction to actually expand it? Um, and what are the struts used in the cage? What's the composition of the struts? So the uh, hydrogel uh, material is the oligo polyethylene glycol fumarate, and we make it into a hollow cage using photo cross-linking in the mold in vitro first, and then we put it into the defect site and then we can um, drip sterile saline into the, onto the cage to let it swell so it will expand. Over what sort of time scale does it um, expand? How quickly does it uh, actually expand into position? 
So ideally, it would be around five to 10 minutes, so there's enough time for the surgeon to place the material properly, but it won't prolong the surgery for the patients. So we have used a different strategies, such as modifying the molecular weight of the OPF and adding negative charge to the cross-linked system to make it expand faster. Thank you. Uh, so what further research and testing needs to be done before this can move into human clinical trials? Um, so our next step is to do a uh, cadaver study where we're using uh, human tissue and with the um, same instrumentation that will be used in the clinic to test the feasibility of this surgical technique as well as the mechanical strength of the composite material. Uh, Bela Buslik, Office of Public Affairs. Uh, these, these cages, uh, uh, apparently they expand in every direction, uh, direction once they're implanted and, and they fill in the space uh, that's left by the missing segment. Uh, have you ever considered something which, uh, which has a, a vertical structure that, uh, that's, uh, that's fixed and it just, uh, the, the, the hydrogel expanding just in, uh, essentially horizontally, so so you could actually act, uh, uh, fill in the space exactly the the way you wanted it. Um. So because we need to insert the graft around the spinal cord, so we need a very small graft. And then once it's inserted, we want to expand to fill in the missing place of the vertebral body. So we do want it to expand both uh, in diameter and in length. And we are able to control the final uh, dimension of the graft. So we're confident that we are able to make a graft that can fit the need of a specific patient. And how, how long does it take, it take for natural, uh, perhaps, regrowth of bone uh, in, the, in that space? Or is there any such thing? Uh, thing like, is, is anybody that's getting these kind of grafts going to be walking around uh, without uh, natural body structure? It, it, uh, uh, I, I would expect some, uh, some uh, institutional bone growth at that, that particular Yes, actually uh, one of uh, our lab project is to develop uh, bone scaffolds that can facilitate the natural bone um, growth into the scaffold and eventually as the bone grows, the scaffold will degrade over time so you have a complete natural bone tissue. However, in these patients with metastatic spines, the primary goal is not to regrow bone but uh, rather to reduce pain and to protect the spinal cord uh, from neurological deficits. So in this case, we're just using a scaffold to, uh, to stabilize the spine. Um, but in future, and in certain cases where we do want the growth of the native bone, so both basically for bone fusion, we can add growth factors into this um, material to help the bone growth into the scaffold. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, what are some of the challenges that, challenges that you faced in this research? Did you hit any roadblocks or um, did you find anything particularly challenging? Um, challenges, first we have found a material that can expand exactly the size we want. In a, how long it expands, um, how, how, how large it expands, and uh, how, how long the time it takes to expand. We need to find a material like that. And we don't want this material to be too soft, too soft and we cannot handle that. And we don't want it to be um, too rigid, too rigid we um, make some pressure to the adjunct um, vertebral body disc. So to find this material and develop it and evaluate it, it's the most challenging step there. We've, we tried a lot, we tried a lot, and we finally found one. At, at this moment is the optimum um, solution to this question. And the second step is the injection. Um, we need to inject that, but we don't want it, we don't want it in situ cross link, but we don't want it to take it too long. If too long, the, patient, the doctor have to wait a long time, and we don't want it to be too short. If too short, we have the injection, it's already cross link. 
So we need it to be of enough humidity cross-link. And after cross-link, uh, this, this kind of scaffolding will be very strong and, uh, to support the, the body weight of the patients. So what kind of mechanical range we have to evaluate. And, and we also tried a lot of materials. And uh, we finally we found one. And this material is very strong and it can cross-link it. And the cross-link time is around a few minutes. And it can also uh, be degradable. And the cells can grow into the scaffold. Um, there's a question asked that how long it takes for the bone to be uh, recovered. It really depends. Different patients, different people have different time. And different people in different ages. For young people, they are short. And for older people, um, they may be taking longer. So it, it really depends. But normally, uh, we have did a lot of uh, animal study. It can be done uh, in a few months or a few years. Thank you. I was just going to ask that question. Actually, how soon before we could actually see this in animal studies, do you think? I mean, you, I know you mentioned the cadavers. What, can you say a little bit more about the cadaver study? Exactly what are you hoping to find from the cadaver study? What parameters are you going to be looking at? And, and what needs to happen next before you can actually take it forward to the clinic? How long realistically, if all went well, before we could actually see it in use in the clinic? Um, this timeline really depends on so from the uh, cadaver study, as I mentioned, that we can use the same um, type of instrumentation that we're currently used in the clinic. So we can really test whether this expandable strategy would work in, this, in humans and how would the mechanical property of the uh, spinal segment uh, after the reconstruction will compare to the normal vertebral body. Um, in terms of the translation to the clinic, um, because both of the OPF material and the PPF material um, are not yet uh, FDA approved, we will need to go through the regulatory process to seek approval from the FDA. So um, the OPF material we have used, we have been actually using it for uh, spine, at the scaffold for spinal cord injury. So we have done a lot of animal studies to show the biocompatibility of the OPF material. So we know it's gonna be safe to be used around the spinal cord. And the PPF material, we have actually developed it over a course of a decade as synthetic bone substitute. And we are very close to um, be submitting a investigator initiated investigational device exemption to the FDA um, for a clinical trial. So we're hopeful that this strategy for um, the tuber body replacement um, will be um, moving uh, forward to clinical use very soon. Okay, thank you. The archived version of this session will be posted at bit.ly slash ACS Live San Diego. Please join us for our next press conference today at 11 a.m. on using a cactus to purify water. Thank you.